Good morning, boys and girls, and welcome to Karen Reads. I'm sitting here in my living room in South Berwick, thinking about the true story I'm going to read to you. It's a nonfiction book, which means it's a real story. It actually happened. This one is about ramen noodle soup, which I, I bet you love ramen noodle soup. I know we do in our house. It's called Magic Ramen, the story of Momofuku Ando, the man who invented it. It's written by Andrea Wang, who loves noodles food and noodling about food. She appreciates this guy, Momofuku, uh, for his persistence and his invention. And she lives in Colorado with her family. And sometimes she and her family has instant ramen for breakfast. The illustrator is Kana Urbanowitz, who works as an illustrator. She also does animation and comics and lives in Kanagawa, Japan. Okay, magic. Ramen. Momofuku Ando picked his way through the rubble on his way home from work. Even though World War II had ended over a year ago, much of Osaka, Japan still lay in ruins and you can just see how dark it is everywhere. Across the street, a long line of people wound down the sidewalk. It was winter and they shivered in their ragged clothes. What were they waiting for, Ando wondered. At the head of the line, Billows of steam rose from a shack. Inside, a man was selling ramen noodle soup. Bad harvests, rationing, and the war had made food scarce. The poor people ate grass and bark to survive. Orphans scrounged through garbage for something to eat. Those lucky enough to hem some money waited for hours and paid outrageous prices for a meager bowl of ramen. And you can tell that meager means small. Ando went home, but he couldn't forget the hungry people. The world is peaceful only when everyone has enough to eat, he realized. Ando decided that food, excuse me, would be his life's work. He started a business making salt. He caught and dried fish. He created nutritious food for people who were sick. With every new product, every new job, and every new business, Ando thought about the line of starving people. He thought about them for over 10 years. Then one of Ando's business deals ended badly. He was penniless. Once again, Ando remembered the thin and hungry people. Wouldn't it be wonderful, he thought, if whole families could have noodles whenever they wanted. No more waiting in line in the cold. No more high prices. No more empty stomachs. He dreamed about a new kind of ramen. His ramen wouldn't be like other noodles. It would be more nutritious. In a shed in his backyard, Ando mixed flour, salt, and water together. He's making noodles. 
He added eggs. He added powdered milk. He even added spinach. Nothing worked. The noodle, noodles were too crumbly or too sticky or too lumpy. Ando kept experimenting with different ingredients. One day he cranked the handle of his noodle making machine and tested the noodles that came out. They didn't crumble, stick, or lump. It was just the right mix of ingredients. Ando realized the key to the preparation of food is balance. Ando kept experimenting. He used chicken soup to make the dough. He brushed season seasonings onto the noodles. He dipped the noodles into soup. Once again, nothing worked. The noodles were too brittle or too soft or too soggy. Ando kept experimenting with different methods. One day, he sprinkled noodles with soup from a watering can, then tossed and separated them. The noodles soaked up the soup and dried. It was just the right procedure. He added a hot water to the dried noodles and stirred. The water now tasted like soup. But the noodles were too tough. They still had to be cooked on a stove. Ando remembered the tired and hungry people. He wanted his ramen to be fast and convenient. It could be made with hot water and in a few minutes. Should, people should be able to make it anywhere, anytime. Day after day, Ando experimented. Night after night, he failed. Month after month, he kept trying. Nothing worked. One night, Ando watched his wife, Masako, fry tempura. She coated vegetables and seafood in batter and dropped them into hot oil. The water in the batter evaporated and left tiny holes in the now crunchy coating. He stared at the tempura. The batter was made from flour and water, just like his noodles. Yada, he cried, that's it. He raced to his shed and threw some noodles into a pot of hot oil. They sizzled and popped and crisped. Ando scooped the fried noodles out of the oil and into a bowl. He added hot water and waited. The water seeped into the tiny holes and softened the noodles. Two minutes later, he plunged a pair of chopsticks into the bowl. He stirred and slurped. The noodles were tender and chewy. They floated in a bowl of hot, tasty soup. After a year of trying, Ando had finally done it. He had invented instant ramen.
Rondo worked hard enough, hard to make enough instant ramen to sell. The whole family pitched in. Masako, Suma, Koki, and even little Akimi. Ando gave demonstrations. He poured hot water. He waited two minutes. Maho no ramen, the astonished customers exclaimed. Magic ramen. Soon everyone was eating Ando's ramen. Poor people, children, busy workers, even royalty. Ando's ramen was nutritious, tasty, and convenient. Thin, cold, tired, and hungry people ate it and felt better. Ando smiled. Peace follows from a full stomach, he said. Ever since, Momofuku Ando and his backyard invention have fostered peace, one bowl of noodles at a time. Okay, I hope you liked our nonfiction book, and we'll see you again next time. Bye-bye.